Hey guys, today we'll be talking about physically based rendering or PBR materials for short, and in particular about the diffuse, normal, roughness and displacement maps. I'll be using the 2.93 version of Blender. So let's download the maps. We need a texture to work with. So let's download one. If you want to follow along with the same texture I'm using, you can go to texturehaven.com and find the large red bricks texture. Large red bricks. And here under download, you can see different maps which you can download. So they're all available here in different formats. We're going to use the JPEGs and we'll need the diffuse so JPEG here, download. We also need normal JPEG, roughness, rough here, and displacement JPEG. I'm not gonna download that now because I already did this before. Now we must apply the texture to something. So we don't need the default cube, which I already deleted. And let's add a grid. So, Shift A, Mesh, Grid. A grid is basically a plane with some subdivisions added to it. So, if you open this up, you will see there are 10 subdivisions in X direction and 10 subdivisions in Y direction. You can also see the size, you can change these parameters here if you want. Now let's add a material. We now want to add a material. So let's select the plane, the grid, and let's go to the shading workspace, which is here. And let's switch to rendered shading. We'll be using the maps that we just downloaded. So let's just copy the folder path here. And here they are. Now make sure the grid is selected and hit the new button to add a new material. Let's make it a bit bigger to see better. So now you should see the principled VSDF material added. Let's add the diffuse map. Let's start by adding the diffuse map. This map determines the color of the texture. So in our case, the brick pattern. To add the map, you can just click on it in the file browser and drag it into the shader editor. When you drop the map in the shader editor, just connect the node's color to the principal shader's color. Color to base color. Now we should see the texture in the 3D viewport. This looks decent, but it's just a flat image. So let's use the other maps to fix this. Now let's add the normal map. The normal map contains vector data about how the texture should interact with the light. When we add the normal map, the texture will look less flat. So just like before, let's just drag the normal map from the file browser editor and drop it here. Now, in case of a normal map, we don't use color information, just the data it contains. So set color space to none color. Now, we don't connect the color map directly to the material. We need a normal map node. So let's add one by hitting Shift A. And then under vector, let's select normal map. Good. Now we can plug color into color and normal into normal. Now in the 3D viewport, you can see the texture got a little bumpy. Now you can now play with the normal map node's strength to make the texture more or less bumpy, like that. Now here's what it looks like 
when we drag strength to an extreme. Now, if you orbit the grid, it will still be flat. So let's set strength to 5. Good. Now let's play with the light. Now we're going to play with the light for a while to see how it interacts with the surface. Go to the layout workspace, render shading to see it better. Now select the light in the outliner, hit Shift S and select selection to cursor. Now, provided the 3D cursor is still at the world center. This will move the light to the world center as well. Now, move the light up two units, so just hit GZ2, enter. Now, zoom in on the grid and hit G to move the light. Try moving it in different directions to see how it interacts with the texture. But don't hit enter so that the movement is not confirmed. Instead, just hit escape when you're done experimenting. Now go back to the shading workspace. The light is probably a little too strong, so with the light still selected, let's go to the object data tab, which is here, and set power to 200 watts. Now let's play with roughness. So select the grid and zoom in on it. In the principal shader, find roughness. It's over here. It's by default set to 0.5. Now we can play with its value. If it goes down, the bricks get shinier. If the valley goes up, the bricks get rougher. So let's leave it at about 0 0.8, for example. Now let's add a color ramp. We can use a color ramp to manipulate roughness. So let's make some more room for the color ramp over here. Now let's hit Shift A, Converter, Color Ramp. Now let's connect its color to roughness. Now we can play with the black and white color handles. Generally, black makes the texture shinier White makes it rougher, so just watch how they influence roughness. Now let's add a roughness map. We will use the color ramp to get some more control over the shininess of the particular parts of the texture. But we're also going to use a roughness map, which contains different shades between black and white. So black white and all the possible shades of gray. The white areas will get rough, the black ones will get shiny. To add the roughness map, just drag it to the shader editor. Now set color space to none color and connect it to the color ramp. This will do the job. You can still, to some extent, manipulate the roughness by dragging the handles of the color ramp. And now let's add the displacement map. Although the texture now looks way better than before, it's still a flat image. Let's add some real displacement to it. We'll need more geometry, so let's start by subdividing the grid. Let's go to the layout workspace again to see it better and then to the modifier tab 
And let's add a subdivision surface modifier. Select simple. We don't want rounded corners. And set both viewport and render levels to at least three. Now below the subdivision surface modifier, add a displace modifier. Hit the new button and you will see that we can now use a texture. So let's go to the texture tab and make sure the type is set to image or movie. Then let's open the displacement image. Now you will see the actual displacement. You can orbit the 3D viewport to see it even better. If you feel that the displacement is too strong, just go to the modifier tab and set strength to a lower value, like for example 0.2. So that's it. You can now tweak all the parameters to your liking but you now have the general idea how all these maps work. Okay, that's it for this video. If you like it, a thumbs up would be great. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos. If you want to leave a comment or ask a question, welcome to do so. Thanks for watching.